Hello, and welcome to Deploy Intune 101, a free video training course on how to quickly configure and deploy Intune as a standalone enterprise mobility management solution. My name is Roy, and this video is brought to you by UEM Authority. Let's get started. We start this episode here in our Endpoint Manager console. In order to set customization and branding within our Azure tenant and also within the Endpoint Manager console, we want to head into Tenant Administration. Under End User Experiences, we want to select Customization. Now, as you can see, there are a few settings here that enable you to set custom branding and specific information for your company portal app. This information will be broadcast across the company portal app to all users and devices that are consuming the Intune service. As you will see here, Microsoft provide a good deal of available customization and branding options where an organization may want to flavor how the end user experience looks within the company portal app. For example, starting at the top here, we can see under the sub banner branding, we're able to set an organization name, which is customizable, a theme color. Now the theme color does translate through into the company portal app. So whichever color you choose here will be applied across your company portal app for all users and devices. We can then also tell Endpoint Manager how we want to show the organization name, whether in the header or not. Here, we are able to provide support information, whether that be for a help desk internally or for a third party outsourced support service. The reason for this is so your user, if they require some support needs, can go straight into the company portal app and retrieve this information fairly quickly. So we can specify things like contact name, phone numbers for the help desk or service desk, email address, if there is a central service desk email address, a website name, if perhaps your company are using a third party support service a website URL, again, for the third party support service, or perhaps an internal support ticketing system, and also any additional information that may be required. Within the configuration settings, we have availability to change how the end user experience enrollment of their device. For example, under device enrollment, the default is currently set as available with prompts. We may want to customize this to only say available with no prompts, for example. We also then have the availability to set a privacy statement. So if your organization are very specific or particular on setting a privacy statement for the end user, we can also define this here. We can also then say whether we like the privacy message to be customized. This will tell your users what endpoint manager can see on their device and cannot see on their device. Now, whether your devices are coming in as personally owned, BYOD or corporate, it may be under the administrator's purview to manually change the device ownership for iOS and Android, in which case we are able to prompt set, create a setting to prompt the user whether or not they are, they should be notified of this change here. We may want to deter users from being able to remove the company portal or reset their device from within the company portal app. These two settings at the bottom here, we are able to take away the remove button and take away the reset button from within the company portal user interface. Going further down here into scope tags, we can see this is set as default right now. Scope tags will be discussed in a later video. However, we might be able to utilize 
segregation and departmentalization if you so wish that kind of requirement within your organization to then start using scope tags to differentiate um, certain policies between different departments or uh, subsidiaries within your organization. Now a fairly new feature within customization for an company portal app is the policies section under here. As you can see, we're able to create up to 10 policies which will assign a separate customization experience to, the, to those subset of users based upon the groups that you select within the assignment. So we will now go ahead and configure customization for our Azure tenant and for the company portal. So we'll go here, head here and put in our organization name, which is UEM Authority. Our color theme is going to be standard. We will choose a designated color from their palette. Uh, for this purpose, we will go for green. And we want to choose to show the organization name within the header. However, the options are organization logo and name, organization logo only, or organization name only. In fact, we will go ahead and show the organization logo only. And now we can go ahead and upload a logo for the theme color background. So as you can see, my logo has been uploaded um, it already has a transparent background so it sits nicely on the green background there now we also have an option to upload a separate logo if the user interface of the company portal app has a white or a very light background so within the main background theme we can see that the port the logo looks quite hidden within the within the color there so we might want to upload the logo again to be placed upon a white background, which looks much better as you can see. So we also have the option to upload a brand image. Now, my logo is my brand image. However, an organization may have a separate logo for their brand and then also a separate logo for their name. However, for my case here, we are using the same image for both purposes. Brilliant. So under support information, my organization does not have a support desk or an external third party support desk. However, for the purpose of this training video, we will just input some information here. So we'll just call this training UEM authority phone number just put in a few zeros there email address um, just, we'll put no reply no reply.com website name uem authority.com wrong field there we we'll need to put that in the bottom in the website url field even call that uem authority okay that's prefix at the front um, no additional information required so we'll move on to the next section under configuration so it says here, customize the setup experience in your company portal for Android and iOS slash iPadOS. As we were discussing earlier, we are able to set how the enrollment experience looks for the user. So here under device enrollment is currently default set as available with prompts. What do we have as other options? We have available with no prompts or unavailable. Well, I would like for my users to be prompted about the, the enrollment experience and um, what the organization might be able to capture or not see on their device. We will leave this set as available with, with prompts for now. Under the privacy statement, um, we do not have a privacy statement. However, 
I will input UEM authority website anyhow just to satisfy that necessary required field. Now for iOS and iPadOS, during the enrollment process, there is a part of the setup where the user is able to see by default what Endpoint Manager can track, collect data and information about, and cannot track and cannot uh, collect information and data about. We are using the default message, however, an organization is able to customize this message as much as they like. So it's a very, very good idea to take that into consideration when building out the environment and also the enrollment process for your users. We will keep this set as no under device ownership notification. We don't have any need for this. However, if you are bringing in devices as corporately owned, uh, apologies if you're bringing them in as BYOD or personally owned, and you are not pre-declaring the devices, you may want to change the name of each device on an individual or on a bulk basis, in which case it might be ideal for you to select yes here. Just so your users are aware that their device ownership is, is correct, um, in the correct category for, for what they are consuming the Intune service for. Under app sources here, so we can choose which additional app sources will be shown within the company portal. Uh, we have no requirement to show any Azure AD enterprise applications or office online applications. For this purpose, we will keep those as hidden. And then under hide features, currently the hide remove button on corporate Windows devices is grayed out. And also the hide reset button on corporate Windows devices is not selected. For this purpose, we're talking around mobile devices for now. Um, so here under hide remove button on corporate iOS and iPadOS devices, I would like to remove that. I would also like to remove the reset button. Now we are done, we'll select review and save. We can review our settings here. We'll then go ahead and select save. To set terms and conditions for your organization, we head to Tenant Administration on the left side menu. Under End User Experiences, select Terms and Conditions. An organization may want their users to accept terms and conditions within the company portal before they are able to enroll devices or access company resources through apps like email in Outlook or corporate data and documents through OneDrive or SharePoint. You can create multiple sets of terms and assign them to different groups based upon language support or country variations. In order to create a terms and conditions policy, we go ahead here and select the create button. We give the policy a name and then we give the policy a brief description. You will notice the description is not a required field. However, we will copy and paste the name and perhaps give this a brief description. Terms and conditions, policy for users within the United Kingdom. We go ahead and select next. We give the terms and conditions a title. So for this purpose, this may be more customizable to your organization. So you may want to enter your uh, organization name here. So the user can see that it's come from your organization and it's not being uh, mistakenly broadcast elsewhere. Terms and conditions. Tell you what, I'll give you this mobile device terms and conditions. Now, I do not have any example terms and conditions. However, you may want to 
reference your own HR terms and conditions or have some custom terms and conditions created for um, Intune or Endpoint Manager. Um, I'll just pop in here example terms and conditions. One thing to note, hyperlinks are not openable from within the terms and conditions when they are presented to the user within the company portal app. So do not designate a hyperlink which sends the user to a explicit set of terms and conditions where they can accept or deny. That will not open externally outside of the company portal app. There is a character limit within these text box fields. However, it's quite extensive. So if your terms and conditions are quite lengthy, maybe see if they can be um, diluted and shortened somewhat, or you might be able to fit them within both of these text fields. Okay, so we'll go ahead and press next. We will select add all users. And then press next review what we have created when we're happy we'll press create so we can see here that endpoint manager has successfully created the terms and conditions policy as you can see is populated now and the last modified date was today a few minutes ago and is assigned 